This topic is about the derivation of aircraft equation of motion. Uh, an aircraft has six degrees of freedom in motion, uh, three in translational and three rotational motion. The three forces acting on the aircraft are the axial force, the side force, and normal force, uh, denoted, denoted as capital X, Y, and Z, respectively. And the moment about the aircraft CG, uh, rolling moment, pitching moment, and yawing moment. Um, uh, in the aircraft equation of motion, this will be denoted as capital L, M, and N, respectively. So these six equations of motion that we will derive will be due to these forces and moments. Before before we write the equation, let's establish our axis system. In general, there are two main reference frames involved in rigid body dynamics. These are the earth fixed frame uh, or the inertial frame, and this is fixed to the earth, and the other one is the body fixed frame, and this is fixed to the rigid body, and in our case, the aircraft. So the earth fixed frame. Um, the positive x direction is defined as north, uh, positive y direction is pointing east, and positive z direction is pointing straight down to the Earth's core. So the positive sign convention is north, east, down, and this sign convention is used for aircraft navigation. For the body fixed frame, positive x is pointing straight out of the aircraft's nose, Positive Y is out through the aircraft's right wing, and positive Z is pointing down. Uh, in aircraft motion, we describe one more reference frame, um, which is the stability axis. The stability axis is also fixed to the aircraft's body, but the X axis is aligned with the velocity vector. So we can get the stability axis system by rotating the x-axis of the body fixed frame through the angle of attack alpha. Um, so we align this x-axis with the velocity vector. Now um, we know that there are three kinds of axis system involved. Now let's talk about coordinate transformation. There are many external forces acting around the aircraft and we use the appropriate reference frame to define these forces, for example, gravity. Uh, it is conveniently expressed in the Earth fixed frame because the force of gravity is always pointing down. So, if we want to describe the force due to the weight of the aircraft, we describe it um, in the Earth's fixed frame, and the force is just mass times gravity on the Z component of the Earth's Earth fixed frame. The aerodynamic forces, such as the drag and the lift, um, are defined in the stability axis system because we know that the magnitude and direction of these forces um, would change based on the angle of attack. The, the thrust force that comes out from the engine that are fixed to the aircraft's body would be described in the body fixed frame. So with all these forces around um, our aircraft, that we defined um, through three different axis systems, we have to realize that if we want to write the equation of motion, we have to write it in just one reference frame. And um, we use Newton's second law of rigid body dynamics for writing the equation of motion. And we must know that this law is only applicable for Earth fixed frame. However, if you want to write the aircraft's equation of motion, it actually makes more sense if you write it um, in respect to the body fixed frame, um, not the earth fixed frame. Uh, there are several reasons to this. First of all, if you want to measure the aircraft's motion, such as pitching or rolling, we use instruments like accelerometers, uh, speed sensors, and gyrometers, and these instruments are fixed on the airplane. This means that the measurements that we get are relative to the airplane's body, not relative to the Earth. Uh, another reason is that most of, the, most of the forces around the aircraft are more easily defined in the body axis. The lift, the drag, and the thrust forces are all defined in body axis. The only force that is described in the Earth fixed frame is the gravity. 
So this means that if we write the equation of motion in body fixed frame, we need to rotate the gravity force. But this is just rotating one parameter as opposed to rotating several parameters if we were to write in the equation um, uh, the equation in the earth fixed frame. So with all this reasoning, we want to write our equation of motion in the body fixed frame. However, since the Newton second law is applicable in the earth fixed frame, this implies that we must rotate our variables equation from earth fixed axis to body fixed axis. Um, to transform our axis from earth fixed to body fixed, vari um, our variable will go through uh, a sequence of rotations through Euler angles. These are the yaw angle, the pitch angle, and the roll angle. The order of the rotation matters. Um, first, we rotate the variable through the yaw angle. Second, we rotate through the pitch angle. And third, we rotate through the roll angle. Uh, here's how the axis transformation looks like mathematically. We start by having um, the x, y, and z forces defined in the earth fixed frame. We first rotate these variables through the yaw angle psi. That gives us a matrix R3. We then rotate the variables through the pitch angle theta. That gives us the matrix R2. And then we rotate um, through the roll angle phi. That gives us R1. So to get the total transformation um, from the force in earth fixed frame, Fe, to the force in body fixed frame, Fb, we multiply all the matrices R1, R2, and R3 together. The multiplication of these variables gives a complete rotation matrix. This rotation matrix will be used to rotate um, our gravity force component from the earth fixed axis to the body fixed axis. Now, we have covered the preliminaries. Now let's derive the aircraft equation of motion. There are three major steps in deriving the equation. First, um, we write the Newton's second law for each of the aircraft's motion. This is essentially the equation F equals MA. Uh, and note that this equation is written in the earth fixed frame. When we use this law, we assume that the earth is fixed in space, uh, which is a valid assumption considering our aircraft will always remain inside the earth's atmosphere, that um, uh, it doesn't go to outer space such that it will see the earth, that the earth is actually moving around its orbit. The, the second step is to reformulate the Newton's second law in body frame. We also make an assumption that the airplane is a rigid body. Um, to simplify our equation, we make two further assumptions that the airplane is symmetrical about its center line. Um, we also assume that the mass and moment of inertia of the aircraft is constant. The third step is to identify all the forces and moments around the aircraft. Note that the forces that are fixed to the Earth's axis, which is the gravity, will need to be rotated to the body frame. So let's step this through one by one. In step one, uh, we start by writing the Newton's second law in the Earth fixed frame. Uh, it's described as the sum of all forces equals to the mass and the acceleration of the aircraft. Likewise, the sum of all moments equals to the change in the moment. Um, of momentum or the angular momentum. We will write one equation for each axis. One equation for the force in x, one equation for the force in y, and one for the force in z. The same goes for the moment. One equation in rolling moment, pitching moment, and yawing moment. We then reformulate our equation in body frame. Let's look at the force equation first. We need to redefine the acceleration uh, this was initially defined in the inertial frame. Now we want to define it in body frame. So the acceleration uh, equals to the acceleration of the body itself plus the cross product of the body's angular velocity and its velocity. The velocity component, um, uh, the velocity of the aircraft in the body frame 
um, R, U, V, and W, which are the velocity in X direction, Y direction, and Z direction, while the angular velocity of the aircraft um, are P, Q, and R, which are the roll rate, pitch rate, and yaw rate. So the cross product is obtained by taking the determinant of the direction and magnitudes of omega and v. If we add the vector of the aircraft's body acceleration and this cross product, we then obtain a matrix of the acceleration of the inertial frame translated to the body frame. Um, therefore, our equation of motion is the force in body reference frame, um, and that equals to the mass times the acceleration in body frame that we have computed just now. The third step is to identify all the forces around the aircraft and expand these forces. Uh, in general, the forces involved are the thrust force, the aerodynamic force, and the gravity force. All these forces are defined in the aircraft's body frame, except for gravity that are fixed to the inertial frame. So we need to rotate the gravity force to body, body frame using the rotation matrix. The force of gravity uh, only occur in the Z component um, of the Earth fixed frame, and the magnitude is W, the weight of the aircraft which is its mass times gravity. We can rotate this force component by multiplying it with the rotation matrix, which we have discussed earlier. The rotation matrix describes the rotation of this component about the other angles. So our gravity force uh, rotated in body axis uh, is equal to this. We can also use uh, trigonometry to rotate the gravity force because we can break this down into a scalar 2D problem and we should get the same rotations of the gravity force. Now let's take a look at the moment equation. We follow the same three steps. Uh, we start by writing the moment equation in earth fixed frame. We then reformulate um, the equation in body frame. We follow the same procedure and we use the cross product to get this inertia matrix. Um, to simplify the inertia matrix, we assume that the xz is a plane of symmetry. This implies that the products of inertia ixy and iyz are zero. We then identify all the moments. In general, the moments are generated from the aerodynamic forces and the thrust force. Uh, note that there are no moments due to gravity um, because the origin of the body fixed axis is at the aircraft's center of gravity and gravity force acts exactly at the CG so there's no moment induced by this force. Okay so here are the six scalar equations of motion of the aircraft that we have derived. Uh, three equations describing the moments and three equations describing the forces. I'd like to point out that these equations are nonlinear and highly coupled. Let's recall the assumptions that was made when we derived the equation of motion. Four assumptions were made. Um, that the Earth is fixed in space and the airplane is a rigid body. The airplane's mass and moments of inertia are constant over the time of interest and the XZ plane is a plane of symmetry. With some of these assumptions, we can actually reduce the 6 degree freedom equations into a 3 degree freedom longitudinal equation of motion and a 3D graph rhythm lateral directional equation of motion. In longitudinal equation of motion, we only take account the X force equation, the Y moment equation, and the Z force equation. So, longitudinal motion consists of only the pitching, 
um, uh, the pitching motion and the uh, Y and Z forces. In lateral directional equation of motion, uh, we take account of the X moment equation, Y force equation, and Z moment equation. The lateral directional motion consists of a coupled rho and yaw rotations as well as the Y force.